Lambeau Field. This is the scene of a few chapters in Seahawks history and serves as host of the final preseason matchup. It's much more than a single game for many of these players. They're fighting for a chance to stay for the 2023 season. With the end of August come the questions. The anxiety that plagues even the most fortified of vets. Looks, has time. Gonna let it fly back corner of the end zone. There to make the catch. Touchdown, Seahawks. Jake Bobo. Somebody in our meeting yesterday said, give me more Bobo. You got it. From 18 yards out. Who will be the ones to go to war with? Another one of those veteran secondary performers stops this play for a loss of three, but that ball was batted right back into the hands by Roderick Perry, the second of the Seahawks, and Love catches it out of the air and then got drilled. Because as the initial 53-man roster is set, the regular season is just around the point. Through the preseason, 12s have watched as the coaches use this opportunity to try out new players and known players in different positions. Definitely, honestly, a second year, uh, you kind of know what to expect. Uh, you know, it's truly, if you haven't been in this building before, it's truly unique, uh, one of a kind. And uh, it could be uh, eye opening when you first get here, uh, you know, way things go in a great way. Uh, so, second year now, just knowing what to expect, knowing. Uh, the lay of the land, per se. Uh, very excited to be here and trying to take advantage of every opportunity we get. I'm Carl Scott. I'm the senior defensive assistant, defensive passing game coordinator for the Seattle Seahawks, going into my second year. Carl Scott is constantly evaluating his section of the defense. I mean, with K. Scott, we have really good ties because we're both Houston guys. So as far as coaching, I mean, he's one of the guys that he's going to teach you. He's come from that, you know, Nick Saban tree where, you know, it's defensive backs and, you know, it's about the DBs. And being here with Pete is just continue to raise that bar for him. And he's always teaching. He's always there for the players. He's going to make the room light. But at the end of the day, we can always get serious and, you know, have those serious convos where, you know, something didn't go right in the game. You know, we're going to get it fixed. But he's not one of those guys that's an emotional roller coaster. He's steady. Um, he's what you want as a DB coach. And I enjoy it every day. I'm blessed to have him as a coach. And, um, year two should be even more fun. Second down 11, blitz is coming. They miss Greer, who gets the throw. It's picked off at the goal line. Coming back near side, turns up field 10, 15, 20, knocked out of bounds on the 20 yard line. Kobe Bryant slid into safety this preseason as the competition at cornerback between Trey Brown and Michael Jackson unfolded. For the players entering their second year in a consistent role preseason felt different. Do this, man. You get that? Anything is possible. <laughs> I mean, those guys are the foundation. You know, I mean, when you look at it, you know what this team is going to be in the future, and those guys are learning how to lead. You know, they've learned and they've learned how to play football. They know what it is. They, you know, nothing can surprise them on game day anymore. It's more of just locking in on their keys and knowing who they are. And, and those guys have made tremendous jumps. And. Um, I'm excited to be able to play next to him because when I retire, I'll be able to, you know, be looking on TV and be telling you, telling guys that, yeah, those are my young guys right there and they make an impact in the league today. So whenever they need me, they always reach out. And for me, I just want to be that steady presence for them and um, continue to see them grow. One is winged on the left side, the turn, play fake. Rush, seven step, drop, ball gets slapped and there away. there he is again. Boy, a Moppin, that's the second time he's turned the corner and gotten a hand up and knocked down a pass, or at least tipped a pass. 
be where your feet are means that whatever game or whatever situation you're in today is the most important. You can't think about down the road. You can't think about two weeks, three weeks, four weeks from now. It's whatever's in front of you right now. So one of the things I've taken into account is that you know every opportunity I go out there, I gotta put on my best show because that's the next opportunity. Keep that in a mindset and it helps easier to play and you don't really think about much else besides what you have going on right now. Players who were taking reps in their first NFL games last year now follow on the sideline, hyping up the guys fighting to earn their spot. It was interesting to see a lot of the guys playing for the first time together. Uh, you got the new guys that came in and just to see that formation, to go against somebody else in our own offense, honestly was fun. I think that's the best thing about it is like you get to go against new people. You know, you don't get to see the same people over and over again. So that's what excited me about Saturday. And then it was fun to be out there with the guys, just having fun and cutting it loose. And that was the biggest thing we talked about going into the game, pre-game. The guys in the huddle said, this is our opportunity to cut it loose, let's do it. So it was fun to do that. Good penetration by Boye Mafe, forcing that bad pass from Cooper Rush. For the most part, you know, as people, you know, been giving the praise and, you know, noticing that, I tend to, I tend to shy away from it and just, you know, focus on the next thing. Noticing that myself is always ways to improve and make sure I can keep consistency. And that biggest thing for me is to try to have the consistency in the play. Don't want to try to be up and down, just want to be a consistent player and I'll go out and put my best foot forward as much as I can. Greer looks, pump fakes, pulls the ball down, scrambles, still scrambles, being chased, all the way back to the 45. He's gonna go down and lose a mile in the process. Seattle finally caught up with him and brings him down. Tyreek Smith entered the Seahawks as part of the 2022 rookie class, but an injury kept him from the field last year. I love seeing him out there and it's, you know, especially because, you know, we came in, we were drafted in the same class, and we always talked about it, and it was always a bummer that he wasn't able to be out there with us last season. But just to see him coming into this year and becoming comfortable in his own skin and becoming himself as a player, and to see him out there, I love it, I love it. But this preseason was a chance to put the grind of recovery behind him, and he did that by sacking the quarterback. Not a bad start. Man, the relationships are tight in the room. Uh, everybody is like, a, it's a brother-like feeling in there. Everybody helps each other. No one's, uh, you know, selfish. And everybody's just really just trying to uh, help everybody else. And, you know, when one guy subs out, you know, we expected the next guy to come in and, you know, just not even, not even have no slack. We just picking up where we left off. So, uh, yeah, the guys, they were all on the sideline happy for me. I mean, they were just showing so much love, so much support. And, like, the whole game, they were just, like, hyping me up, hyping me up. And then when I finally got the sack, it was, it was really happy, so it was cool to see. Uh, Tariq Smith had a really nice game on his side, on the defensive side. Uh, eight tackles and the, the big sack at the end. Um, both the last two weeks, the finish on defense with chasing the quarterback and, and getting him knocked down and all that, making the big sack to, to win the game. Um, I think it's, it's just the feeling of how you finish. Every uh, moment I get on the field, it's like surreal, and I just thank God uh, just for putting me in this position and just uh, giving me the guidance and the strength to be here. And I uh, thank the team, they, they, they've been rallying behind me and it's just been a great uh, camp. Um, just working every day, trying to stack days, make sure I get better each day. Uh, you know, last year was kind of going off of uh, figuring out what's going on. Didn't really know what the schedule would look like and what to prepare for. But going into this year, I kind of knew what to expect, knew what, we were, what type of schedule we'd be on and type of things to expect to happen. So. You know, it's been helpful to me. It's made it a lot easier for me to understand and prepare for what's going on next. I've great relationships with everybody in my room, I feel like, especially for guys that were with us last year to this year. You know, so it's been special to see that. And, you know, especially the guys I came in with my class, you know, I, those guys, like, were locked in. <laughs> so it's just, you know, nice to see everybody that, you know, we came in together and to see that second year jump and seeing the improvement that everybody made this off season is amazing. Having one year's muscle memory makes a typical game week feel like second nature. All right, everybody, it was nice. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> See. K Scott, like your uncle that you never met, but he's a coach, so it's, it's weird. Like, he knows kind of like where I'm from because he coached at Alabama, so. He knows exactly what to say to get me like 
either to calm down or like, or you need to pick it up, like whatever. Like he says the exact same thing. Like say in practice, you drop a pass. He's not gonna say nothing then, but he gonna wait till you see him. Like I go to his office, he gonna walk by like, what's up Butterfingers? Like, come on man, like <laughs> you been sitting on this one. <laughs> like, so yeah, he cool dude. My leadership style, if you wanna put it in that category, uh, I truly believe I'm a direct reflection of my guys and vice versa, they're a direct reflection of me. So, you know, I carry and hold myself to a certain standard and know how I see myself. Uh, so, you know, just common terms, if they are pro producing and doing what they should be doing and reaching their full potential and competitive, you know, every step of the way, uh, that makes me a good coach, you know, and if they're not, uh, then that makes me a bad coach and you kind of understand where I see myself at uh, as being a great coach. So. Uh, it's a connection, and, and we're in this thing together. So where they go, I love to see them succeed. I live through them vicariously. Uh, you know, I, I love the relationship, not just on uh, the field. Uh, they, the guys know when we step in those white lines and we get into the classroom, we have business to take care of. Uh, there's no hiding that. But at the same time, I understand, and I hope they do too, that I'm a man, I'm a person, and so are they. Position coaches spend a lot of time with their rooms during training camp, guiding their players through the chaos of camp as best they can. But this isn't John Glenn's first rodeo. John Glenn, linebackers coach, Seattle Seahawks. Uh, gosh, I've been here 12 years. So it's been a long time. Wow. You, know, you really want these guys to come out and just show their true selves to be their best versions of themselves. Inspiring players to compete within a system while maintaining their personal identities is a fine balance. Can't control any of the results, uh, but we can control being our best football team. Yeah, obviously I've been with Coach for such a long period of time now, and every day it's just the competitive mantra, the leadership that he sets for us, you know, about championship opportunities. Um, he is uncommonly consistent at everything that he does. That culture of consistency is something players and position coaches alike thrive in here in Seattle. And it's been their edge for over a decade. As the team turns the page, the mentality stays the same. One snap at a time, one day at a time, one game at a time. I mean, it's always a point in time where you, you always be grateful for the opportunity that you have. You know, for me, it's been nine straight years of, you know, making a 53-man roster, so I'm forever grateful for that. Um, I never take it lightly. I never take it for granted, but at the end of the day, it always sucks that, you know, these guys that you've been around since April, May, you build these connections with guys. You, you know, you're in group messages, and you go to dinner, and you go to Top Golf, and you do those type of things, and, you know, some guy's not going to be here. And that's the unfortunate reality of it all. We know that. But at the end of the day, you never want to see that happen. So for me, for other vets, you know, we know the business. But, you know, we got to flip the switch and be ready to go. You know, um, now all the preseason chatter, all the, you know, offseason hype, all that stuff is going now. So I will turn the lock in and um, be ready to go for another season because this one can really be special. Walk up in the life. Yeah, I'm really am. Talking my shit like, hey, them really him. Don't believe me, come and see me. Got three wishes from my genie. Now I'm on your local TV. Y'all don't talk about women. Say she wanna come and see me when I'm in a local city. I'm like, pause though. Please step aside so they can see me. And I talking my shit like, them really him. My goal this year is just to be better than Tariq Wollin last year. You know. I go by Reek now because everybody calls me Reeks and they make it easier because, you know, some people call me Tyreek and Tariq and, I mean, most people just call me Reek just to erase that whole problem, but I just want to be better than Tariq Wollin last year. Really just be consistent, um, stack on the last game I just had, uh, really just do right longer than the opponent, that's really my, my mindset, so going out, going out there empty in the tank, giving all I got, and just going 120%. I'm going to play my best ball, show myself and establish myself and, you know, honestly just improve my game and show what type of player I can be in this league. Uh, as a team, you know, we want to go all the way. We're planning to play 20 weeks, you know. We're trying to have that goal be up there in February playing for the big deal. So that's definitely the goal as a team. Oh, I can answer that. That's not as hard as I thought it was going to be. 
Uh, goal uh, for the team and the group is to be the best group when we line up, represent ourselves, and put something on the field that you know is worth us putting our name to. That's the goal. The main goal is always to win. You know what I mean? I want to win. I want to do it in a dominant fashion, and you know I want to let put people on notice the first week. But it's just week one. You know what I mean? We got week one, and we go brick by brick. But um, at the end of the day, you know uh, it's always the first impression that you want to leave and. Our first opportunity, our first impression is to do a week one against the Rams. They just happen to be the opponent. So um, for me, I'm going to be locked in. I'm going to be ready to go, and I'm going to rally the guys. And, you know what I mean, I think we're going to go out there with some good energy. Second and 15. Akers in the backfield. Mayfield from his own 21 under center. Play fake. Mayfield's looking left. Going to let it fly deep. Got a man, Van Jefferson. And it is picked off. Diggs picks it off. Steps out of bounds. Far side. Finally, Baker Mayfield throws us one. Diggs came from the middle of the field. Raced all the way to the far side and picked it off. His fourth interception of the season. The Seahawks have life. Week one brings a familiar foe to Lumen Field where 45s are 54s once again. 